Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at the simplest reason for why zero factorial should be defined as one. Now, the simplest way to define the factorial for a positive integer is we take that positive integer and then multiply it by all the positive integers less than it down to one. So let's first start by looking at a simple table of factorial values. So first, one factorial, that should just be one. Two factorial, two times one, that's two. Three factorial, three times two times one, that should be six. Let's go a few more. Four factorial, that'll come out to 24. Five factorial, five times four times three times two times one, that comes out to 120. Let's go one more value, six factorial, because beyond that, the numbers get too big for me to multiply. So six factorial, six times five times four times three times two times one, that comes out to 720. So the factorial values grow very quickly. Now what we're going to observe here is these factorials, they obey kind of a nice property or pattern. And let's rewrite these. Buried in each of these factorials is the previous numbers factorial. Notice inside of three factorial, we have two times one, that's two factorial. So I can write three factorial as three times two factorial. Same thing here, four factorial contains three factorial. And that pattern continues. Five factorial contains the previous factorial. We can write that as five times four factorial. And again, that holds here as well. We have five factorial times six. Now the way we think of a previous factorial, let's just think on a number line. If we have some arbitrary integer, what comes before it is one less. What comes after it is one more. So it looks like we can generalize this and the pattern will continue to hold. We might write this as n factorial. It's n, that's these numbers in front, the three, four, five, and six, but times the previous factorial. And before n factorial would have been n minus one factorial. And this is arguably the most important property for the factorial function. Well, we can easily continue this list going down, seven factorial, eight factorial, so on and so on. What about zero factorial? If we were to go the other direction. Well, let's go ahead and use this formula. N factorial equals N times n minus one factorial. Let's just go ahead and plug in n as one. On the left, we're gonna get one factorial. And on the right, we have one. And notice inside the parentheses, one minus one, that is zero. So we get zero factorial, and fortunately, we do know the value right now for one factorial, which is one. So if we write this out, the left side is one. Anything, the anything here is zero factorial times one is just the anything or something. And what we find 
is that in order for this property to continue to hold, we have to define zero factorial as one. No need for the gamma function, zero factorial is one because we want this property to hold. Hope you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe.